And that leads me to really the plot of the book, The Infrastructural City, which I uh, edited uh, over the last uh, few years at the Net Lab. And basically the plot of that book was that we are now in a situation where, this was looking at Los Angeles, but really looking at it as a case study. It could easily have been a book about New York. Um, but when I started it, I was in LA, and there was a reference to Rainer Bannon's Los Angeles Architecture for Ecology, so it was kind of perfect for that. Um, and as, as a case study, but basically the, the plot of the book was that infrastructure is something that has, uh, is not only is it, you know, physical realm, but it's also a realm that's increasingly populated by uh, various kinds of constituencies, some of which are these kind of uh, extremely uh, nimbious, that is not in my backyard, publics. Uh, others are, uh, in, are various kinds of government agencies that have their own great stakes in things uh, and refuse to make innovation uh, a, a possibility. If you look at infrastructure in the broadest sense, as you could include NASA, and you could look at right now, NASA's in great trouble, and the manned space program is probably going to come to an end, uh, at least at NASA, within uh, six years, if not, if not next year, because of uh, their own inability to develop anything uh, because of their own incredible bureaucracies. And there are plenty of other examples of this in, in, uh, in the government. So there are these kind of government constituencies that are incredibly locked down and have their own points of view, have their own desires, their own drives. There are various kinds of vested publics that have various interests that are extreme, that are generally are defensive, no new taxes, don't build this in my backyard. Uh, and these can be both, these can be from the very rich to now the very poor. I mean, everybody's very adept at this kind of, of uh, defensive move, being able to throw up various kinds of roadblocks, to also uh, various kinds of governmental uh, constituencies, in not, not in terms of agencies, but in Congress uh, and in the administrative wings. Like for example, there is a, a lot of suggestion of what happened to Obama was that there were various people in the administration who have a kind of antipathy towards infrastructure as a form of investment because they come out of banking. And they see a kind of virtual investment as being a way to recover. A virtual investment is seeing it as being something that's financial. So the plot of the book was that, that as infrastructure begins to collapse in this country and is uh, due to lack of funding and due to these kind of uh, constituencies that, are, that have these stakes, what we're beginning to see is this condition that in a certain way it's going to be much more like what we might see in the developing world. I mean, I think in certain ways Ram was really right about going to Lagos and looking at Lagos as a future infrastructural condition for the West. I mean, I think you're absolutely right that kind of the traditional infrastructures, you know, are not what we're going to really see in the future or what we can really should be work thinking about. I mean, I think, I'm sure I'd love to see more high-speed rail, but, um, you know, and until we can get a lot more uh, energy behind, it's not going to happen. So I think that, you know, as I suggested in some of the essays I wrote at the start of the year, I think that there are smaller projects, more nimble, more agile, uh, that might in fact use more innovative technology. We think of some of the things being done here, like, like this, the kind of uh, thinking that David Benjamin is doing in the Living Architecture Lab. The kind of work is really compelling to me, a kind of, if you will, kind of hacker, uh, hacking into the city, right? Uh, kind of hacker mentality towards infrastructure. Uh, at the same time, I think that, you know, that there's a certain limit to that. I mean, I think that absolutely should, that kind of research should go on, but that's not everything that can happen. One of my interests right now is really raising a kind of awareness, uh, both within the design community and a broader community, about the problems in, in the system, the problems that are so inherent in the system and that are so difficult to change, because I think that optimism is fantastic and really crucial, but you also need to have a certain degree of uh, reality that, that may say, like, look, hey, we have a problem and we need to do